Uh, according to the, the, uh, a book called The Sunday Problem, which was a study book of the United Lutheran Church, it, uh, it says that we have seen how gradually the impression of the Jewish Sabbath faded from the mind of the Christian Church and how completely the newer thought underlining the observance of the first day took possession of the church. We have seen that the Christians of the first three, three centuries never confused one with the other, but for a time celebrated both. So we look at 18, thir Acts 13.42 and Acts 13.44. And it says, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. And the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Oh wait. And the next Sabbath day, almost the whole city, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Uh, according to Wikipedia uh, article entitled, titled Judaizers, it says the church at today, at large today, identifies us with the idea that the law has no place in Christianity, but yet still holds that the Ten Commandments must be obeyed minus the fourth commandment of the Sabbath. Most Christians believe that mo much of the Old Covenant has been superseded, while according to some modern Protestants, it has been completely abrogated and replaced by the law of Christ. So this makes no sense whatsoever to me. Why would we say such a statement or a belief to say that we believe that the Old, the Old Testament law Ha, or covenant has been superseded and has been done away with, but yet, if I was to say or suggest that we worship another God, that we go and rob and steal from people, commit adultery, commit murders, people would say that's unacceptable, that's against the Bible. So th there's, a, there's a contradictive doctrine that exists in the church today that the standard is not consistent. Either we believe the law has been done away with, and then what do we have left? What would cause us to be a Christian? By what law would we walk by? What, what would constitute us being a Christian? Um, so for us to say we're going to keep part of the law and take part of it out makes no sense either. So to, to say this thing that the church at law at large today holds with the idea that the law has no place in Christianity. Really, it does not, it does not go with the idea of reason, of logical reason. Why would Christianity want to abolish the law or believe the law has been abolished if they are going to still go by some of the law of the Ten Commandments. So we have some Sunday confessions from, um, from some Christian sources that we need to take a look at. So let's look at the first one, which is Dr. Edward Hiscox, author of the Baptist Manual. He says, there was and is a commandment to keep holy the Sabbath day, but that Sabbath day was not on Sunday. It will be said, however, and with some show of triumph, that the Sabbath was transferred from the seventh to the first day of the week. Where can the record of such a transaction be found? Not in the New Testament. Of course, I quite well know that Sunday did come into use in early Christian history as a religious day as we learn from the Christian fathers and other sources. But what a pity that it comes branded with a mark of paganism and Christian with the name of a sun god when adopted and sanctioned by the papal apostasy and bequeathed as a sacred legacy to Protestantism. BibleProbe.com says, Yes, it was the Catholic Bishop of Rome, later known as the Pope, who officially changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday in Christendom after Constantine the Great's 
321 AD edict, Sylvester I was the Bishop of Rome during the reign of Constantine who gave his stamp of approval to the 321 edict. Sylvester I did this because being in the office of the Bishop of Rome was with its positional authority, thus nodding his approval. This change from Saturday to Sunday was later confirmed at a council of bishops at the Council of Laodicea in 363 AD, saying Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, meaning Saturday. Harris Franklin Wall in the Christian Advocate says, Take the matter of Sunday. There are indications in the New Testament as to how the church came to keep the first day of the week as its day of worship. But there is no passage telling Christians to keep that day or to transfer the Jewish Sabbath to that day. D.L. Moody says the Sabbath was binding in Eden and has been in force ever since. This fourth commandment begins with the word remember, showing that the Sabbath had already existed when Yahweh wrote the law on the tablets of stone at Sinai. How can men claim that this one commandment has been done away with when they admit that the other nine are still binding? Dr. Augustus Neander from his book, The History of the Christian Religion and Church, wrote, The festival of Sunday, like all other festivals, was always only a human ordinance, and it was far from the intentions of the apostles to establish a divine command in this respect, far from them and from the early apostolic church, to transfer the laws of the Sabbath to Sunday. William Owen Carver, from his book, The Lord's Day in Our Day, writes, There was never any formal or authoritative change from the Jewish Seventh-day Sabbath to the Christian First Day observance. So there we have some very interesting confessions from some, um, some Christian uh, authors, Christian leaders, um, people admitting that the Sabbath was never intended to be replaced by Sunday. So we know that the early Christians kept the Sabbath and Glessler's church history says that the Gentile Christians observe also the Sabbath. And from a book entitled A Learned Treatise of the Sabbath, it says it is, a, it is certain that the ancient Sabbath did remain and was observed together with the celebration of the Lord's Day by the Christians of the East Church 300 years after the Savior's death. So Sabbatarians only keep the Sabbath and not necessarily the Torah. So Sabbatarians could look very much like Sunday keepers. Uh, they, will, they will hold a lot of stuff in common. In fact, a lot of their services can very much mimic a Sunday type service. But on the other hand, Torah keepers keep the Sabbath and the Torah and will look very different from those who go to worship on, at a Sunday church. Is Sunday the new Sabbath? Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that Sunday replaced the Sabbath day. In Matthew 5.19, I mean, sorry, Matthew 15.9, it says, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of man. The commandments of man would be the Sunday worship and not the Sabbath day of worship or keeping Saturday the, the separated holy day. The commandments of man would also include man instituting Sunday as man's Sabbath and getting rid of the, of the biblical truth that God instituted Saturday as His Holy Sabbath. One, one thing is different between the two days, between Saturday and Sunday. One day is holy and the other is not. One day is common and the other is not. So let's rephrase that. Saturday is holy, Sunday is not holy.
Sunday as a common day, whereas Saturday is a set-apart day. When we look at this idea that people have that Sunday is the new Sabbath, we have to also look at that the day of the sun is called Sunday. Sunday is the day of the sun. March 7th, 321 AD, Constantine decrees Sunday as the day of rest. On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrate, magistrates and people residing in the cities rest and let all worship workshops be closed. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits because it often happens that another day is not suitable for grain sowing or vine planting, lest by neglecting, neglecting the proper moment for sup operations, the bounty of heaven should be lost. So this is the official declaration of the of the Christian Sabbath, the new Sabbath replacing Saturday, even though it has no decree by God, who's the one who set up the Sabbath to begin with. Matthew 5.19 says, Whoever there shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall, shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Pastors all over the world have taught their congregations that they don't need to keep the Sabbath or any number of commandments commanded by God. In fact, they go out of their way to come up with teachings that, set, that teach why, why Sunday replaces the Sabbath, why Sunday is the new um, um, Lord's Day, and they will teach why, why um, we shouldn't have to keep the Sabbath. Okay, so now we're going to give some attention to talking about what is the Sabbath. So, uh, the Sabbath is a day of a religious observance and abstinence from work kept by Torah observers from s Friday evening to Saturday evening. It is the seventh day of the week, and it is a day of rest and worship. And Sabbath literally means to rest, to stop, or to cease. Sunday is the first day of the week and it means the day of the sun or the first day of the week. It is translated uh, pictorially as sun day. So it is the day of the sun. It is not a biblically commanded day but it is a, a man mandated day um, to come together to worship God to congregate with one another to set apart out of the days of the week. Man has set apart Sunday as his holy day. It, uh, some may believe that Sunday is the new Sabbath or they can call it the Christian Sabbath. This change actually happened in um, um, 321 AD by Constantine the Great. And they um, like to call it as the, the new the new creation day, but it is actually, according to the Bible, it is the first day of creation. So they like to call it the new creation day <clears throat> because it, they refer to it as the eighth day, uh, meaning the day after the Sabbath. Um, Wikipedia, in their article on Sunday, they quote um, this on their article. For most observant Christians, Sunday observe, is observed as a day of worship and rest, holding it as the Lord's Day and the day of Christ's resurrection. In Roman culture, Sunday was the day of the sun god. In paganism, the sun was a source of life, giving warmth and illumination to mankind. It was the center of a popular cult among Romans, who would stand at dawn to catch the first rays of sunshine as they prayed. If pagans call the Lord's Day the day of the sun, we willingly agree, for today the light of the world is raised, today is revealed the Son of Justice with healing in his rays, and this last quote came from a church father, Saint Jerome. On In Hebrew understanding, the first day of the week is known as Yom Rishon, and Sunday is uh, known in paganistic circles 
as worship of the sun. In Latin terms, it is known as Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun, which gives worship to Mithra, the sun god. And we see here on the screen again how we revisit the Constantine Edict of the Sunday Law, which happened in 321 AD, which refers to the, the venerable day of the sun replacing the Sabbath day. Regarding Sunday, some believers may call Sunday the Sabbath, but it is not. Sunday is the first day of the week and must not be confused with the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day, while Sunday is the first day of the week. With Sunday, millions of people all over the world keep Sunday holy for their own measure of holiness. But what did Jesus and the disciples keep holy? They kept the Sabbath day holy. So we have to be careful when we are when our when we're in our walk with God, we need to make sure that our holiness is God's holiness. And what I mean by that is we can't be making up our own ways that seem right to us and just stick God on it and say, This is our worship we're given to you. Be happy with it, God. But the thing is, God has given us this Bible to show us what He expects of worship from us. And we can look at the story of Cain and see how his offering was not well received because he wanted to do it his way. And but Abel's Abel's was received because he did well. Well, we need to understand if we want to know how to be holy unto God and to how walk holiness with God, we can know by reading his Bible and re-examining our beliefs, rebooting our own ideas of how we worship Him, rebooting our theology, rebooting our doctrines, and making sure it lines up with God's Word. So, when millions of people keep Sunday holy, they, they are keeping it in their own ideas of what is holy. But we look in the Bible and we can see that the New Testament assembly and Jesus and the disciples, they kept the Sabbath day holy. And so we, when we're walking in Hebrew roots, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to walk as the early church walked before it was corrupted. We want to walk as the Nazarene did. So did Jesus suggest a change from Saturday to Sunday? Luke 4.16 and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for a read. And Mark 1.21, it says, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. So this is, this is what G Jesus did, is he went, in, he went into the synagogue, he went and taught at the synagogue. He read in the synagogue. He kept the Sabbath day. This was what, this was what his, um, this was what his custom was. This is what his tradition was. This is what his life was about. Um, there is a, a Sabbath myth that G Jesus' death and resurrection brought about a change, uh, not only in the Sabbath law but in law keeping. But we revisit this verse in Matthew 5. It says, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass away, one, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus didn't destroy or bring an end to the law. He didn't even violate his law. He kept the law because he was the law. He was the word. He was God. He, he, he and God are one. So in this verse with Matthew, he's saying he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. He is bringing full the words because he is the word. He is the Torah. And so, when, when we're keeping the Sabbath day as part of the law, 
we are bringing a part of God into our lives that we become fulfilled with his word because his word will fill us up and it as we begin to walk more with the word which is Jesus and we start w walking more with the Torah with God's commandments we start to feel a little bit more closer to God than we did before and we have to really remember that doing God's laws and keeping the Sabbath will not save us but I do believe that it will make us become closer to him because God says if you love me you keep my commandments so God's commandments are, de are definitely part of his word and Jesus is the word and so we understand in this verse that not one part of God's word shall pass away until all be fulfilled um, and so um, did fu did fulfilling mean that Jesus changed the law I think some some people go around preaching as if this is the case did Jesus fulfill um, any part of the law when he was here no Jesus kept his father's word Jesus didn't die to to um, take away his law he didn't die to um, destroy his law he didn't die to abolish the law how could Jesus break his own word then he would be a law breaker and so in context of scripture Jesus is talking about keeping his law intact and bringing it full not to when we think of fulfill we may tend to think of fulfilling as meaning bringing to an end but fulfilling really means to bring full the first day of the week is Sunday and follows the Sabbath um, Matthew 28 1 it says in the end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week God spoke the holy day into creation and made it part of creation the, co the conversion from Saturday to Sunday is based upon the resurrection of Jesus and that the early church met on Sunday does man's meetings trump God's Sabbath command so I want to explain this a little bit is if we if we are keeping God's commandment of keeping the Sabbath day holy can we still not can we still keep having a meeting day can we still have a meeting day and still keep the Sabbath day yes of course we can but um, we don't we don't come up with meetings and say okay that we had a meeting so now that we don't have to keep the Sabbath day um, so that's this is what the this is what the early church was doing they were having meeting days but yet still keeping the Sabbath day and so these meeting days they kept had to do a lot with keeping the feast days of the Bible like we've already talked about the they, they were they were meeting on one of the Sabbaths that that had to do with with uh, doing the Omer count the Sabbath they were meeting on were part of the the um, the uh, the seven Sabbaths of um, the Shaviot count to Shaviot to Pentecost and so we're not necessarily talking about the first day of the week meetings just any old day they had something to do with the feasts so man's meetings do not trump God's Sabbath commands whether we believe it was one of the Sabbaths of the feasts or it was the first day of the week just because people meet doesn't mean that oh this is the new Sabbath day or just because Jesus resurrected on a particular day doesn't mean he changed it God doesn't leave anything to chance he tells us very clearly what he expects from us so if he wanted to change the Sabbath command he would have told us uh, Sunday meetings are usually kept in lieu of Sabbath because of two reasons the resurrection of Jesus and because the disciples met on the first day of the week and when we look at scripture there's no commandment that God gave that we're supposed to keep Sunday holy uh, Sunday um, Sunday is a man-made institution uh, in the fact that if we're teaching people that 
the Sabbath is no longer binding and that Sunday is now the day, then that is in biblical error and a sin. So Sunday is not commanded, but Sabbath is commanded for us because God commanded it. The, the Torah command in the Ten Commandments um, of keeping the Sabbath day holy, it is the fourth commandment that usually, more often than not, gets ignored and gets willf not only just ignored, but it gets willfully discarded because uh, man's traditions and his religion has taught us that that doesn't apply anymore. The Sabbath command is part of the Ten Commandments, but it has been surgically removed from the list of commandments while yet keeping the other commandments intact and obeyed. Mark 7, 9 says, Full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. So it is this thing that we do in Sunday keeping that removes the Sabbath day that knowingly knows that the Sabbath day is not Sunday and we discard the commandment of keeping the Sabbath. Uh, we discard it so that we can keep our own tradition and keep our own doctrines. Uh,